G'day, how are you? This is Steve Hay, Woodworking Masterclass. It's been a while. And I, I got a message on Facebook from Max, my good friend Max, and he said, that explains why you haven't streamed. And I felt guilty, so I thought I'd stream. Um, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm building a, a larger harp, uh, and I've got to do some veneering, and I also messed up a small harp, so I've got to do some repair work. And there's a few other jobs around, so that's it. Let's get into it. And as always, I'm more than happy to be interrupted and do something else. Let me just have a look, see. I'm live there. I'll just bring out the chat. And then I'm going to be good. Wait a minute, get rid of that, skip the ads. I wish I could do this before I actually go on, but apparently I can't. So there you go. Welcome to the... Okay, that's it. We're there. Okay. And it's good. I, I said to say, those of you who don't know, I was having heaps of trouble with my um, telco, which is a joke. I won't mention their name because they're getting bad enough rap as it is. But I've switched over to Starlink, uh, Elon Musk's satellite thing. And the reason I switched over was because I couldn't stream. My upload speed was absolutely rubbish and the download wasn't much better. <clears throat> and despite my best efforts, no, they weren't going to help me out. Oh, and I just did a test just before I came on. I was getting low latency there. I don't know why. Might have to change the router maybe. Um, but my upload speed is terrific and my download speed is terrific. I think it uploads around 10 and download is about... Um, 56 or something or other, but I'm just noticing there's a bit of a gap there, so I'm going to have to look into that. That obviously isn't internet because I've got a good internet. I might have to upgrade my router I've got over there. We will see. We will see. But at least I know it's not the internet playing up, so that's a good thing. Oh, let me just make sure everything's good here. Okay, whoops, that can stay there. That's there. Everything appears to be good. But why isn't it streaming as per it should? I don't know. Okay. So, I don't know what's going on there. Might have to do a trip to the tech shop. But anyway, I've just finished smoothing this one over and getting the shape that I wanted. And uh, to give you an idea of the size of this one, where's the neck, the pillar? Oh. This is the pillar and that'll go there. So. It's a lot bigger than the ones I've been making. And I want to um, veneer it. What have we got? And uh, Elon sure helps us people who need good spare. That's good. It's true. Thanks, Sevens. Good day, T-Bone. Mate, I, I, I love that one of that, um, the two dogs on the back of the car I've sent that to many people and got many laughs in return. Ah, uh, whoops. Okay, so it's got to be speed with um, my router, I think. But, okay, the uh, veneer I've got, let me move this, is really, really pretty stuff. It's, I think it's actually, it might be maple silkwood, this one. But as you can tell, very, very highly figured, which is what I want. And I've got one down here that I've drawn up. So I'll have to cut that out and then we can glue that on. Then I have to cut one for the other side as well. We'll do that. And this, this was the calamity. Those of you that were following along a while back, I, um, put a harlequin pattern on the neck of this harp and then I did some steam bending to get these shapes here. Finally got that worked out. 
And then I've got over exuberant here with sanding and I went through. Now the thing is, for me to match that pattern and inlay it, it's just, it's not worth the effort, it is a nightmare. So what I'm gonna do is take, whoop, there we go, take a big triangle out of there and I'm gonna make a little, I think I'll do squares actually, um, parquetry triangle made up of squares, then I've just got to inlay one big bit and we'll start doing that today. So a few things happening around the traps. Um, oh, you've often, I don't know if you've heard other people say, but you would have heard me say it, when you're veneering, put veneer on both sides. As in this case, I've got aromatic cedar on that side, Queensland walnut on that side. And if you have a look at that, that's pretty darn straight. It hasn't had much um, deviation either way. So I've done these on purpose. I've done um, slightly different things with the last few harps that I've made because I want to see what works best and how it sounds. So that one I was happy with. The one uh, maple one that I'm doing, I only veneered one side and I knew what would happen. But to give you an idea of what happens when you only veneer one side, you've got that much tension, it's bending the board over, so it's got plywood there, and you get this big curve. In my situation, it doesn't matter, at least I'm hoping it doesn't, because I'm gonna glue that down onto a soundboard. But if you're doing um, a cabinet or something like that, and you only veneer one side, that's what you end up with. You veneer two sides, nice and straight, you veneer one side, you get a big curl in it. So I just thought I would share that in case you wonder why you veneer two sides and you're not gonna see the other side. That is why. Okay, so let me put some of these out. Away, I mean not out. Oh dear, Florida beard and woodworker, g'day mate. It's me, did you miss me? Well, did you miss me? Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I reckon 10 points to the dog, I tell you. Uh, Jared, good morning. Been a while, it certainly has. I, um, I don't really have an excuse. It's, uh, I've been up in the, the top shed and to tell you the truth, I've been doing some other woodwork that has required me to think. And I'm not real good if I've got to think and stream at the same time. But now I'm confident enough that, oh, well, I'm confident enough doing this stuff because I've done this for years. But the new stuff I was learning and doing, um, much went into the bin. But that's how you learn. Oh, dear. Now, I've got a tall mick here that I've got to go and put up in the top shed because it's the top shed tall mick, not the bottom shed tall mick. Then I had a friend around yesterday. We had to cut some glass up for a cabinet he was making. That's why I got all this glass cutting stuff out. And another lady came around for a harp repair. And it's been, it has been quite busy, but it's been good. Ah, let me see. I should have tidied this up first, shouldn't I? Oh, there you go. G'day, Andy! How are you, mate? Lovely to be back. I haven't gone anywhere. Just I haven't been streaming. I've been down here a lot. Actually, the shed's tidy, which is quite remarkable. Ah, all right. That we don't need. Oh, that, yeah, that was one of the things I was doing. The um, Brian Brewer 
bass harp, uh, the Celtic one with the brass strings. Oh, that gave me grief. Um, and what it was, if I can find it, I'll show you. Ooh. In fact, I can show you the harp I'm talking about. Those of you that might remember it, where's, 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 where's? Oh, dearie, dear. Yeah, it was, well, that harp there, which was um, brass strung. And I had so many issues. It's 29 strings. I broke 17 strings trying to tune the flipping thing. And then I read this book, which is an absolute great book. Um, which is a download from Music Makers. And I'll give you an idea. That's the thickness of it. Um, but the information that's in this book is just absolutely priceless. And when I read it, I found out the reason the brass strings were breaking was one of two things. They were either an inch too short or an inch and a half too long. So what I did <coughs> was pull the harp to part and then glued another piece on here, which now I've got to face off. Then on umming and ahhing, I drill these and fill them with dowels and then re-drill the whole um, set out. So they've actually got to come down here and up here and then put a brass inlay over the top. So hopefully you won't even notice, but uh, that's a job to do, but that's this afternoon time. Oh, this is good stuff too. I'm, I'm not getting paid by any of these people, but I just love um, Gorilla Glue. Only buy the small thing. What I use it for is my string bands. I put brass. That's brass in ebony, and then I've got another one around here with brass in walnut. I don't know where it is. Um, but, yeah, the only thing that I have found that glues metal to timber is that stuff. Gorilla glue, poly something or other. Polypropylene or something or other. No, it's good. It's not a PVA one. About, oh, in Australia, that's about $14. But you only use a small amount. And yeah, it, it is good. Oh, I can sit up there. What are we going to do? We'll cut this one out first, I think. Then we'll cut some strips for some parquetry. And see what else happens. What have we got? Dangerous to think. Oh, thanks, Bearded. It's nice to be missed. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, sweet caught you live again. Denford, I... I'm surprised I caught myself live. But hopefully I can get back into the rhythm of it again. I don't see why I can't. Oh, and the other thing I tell you, I lost. It's funny how things put you on. Oh, no, I'll do what we're going to tick. But it's funny what puts you off. I lost my wallet about, oh, I don't know, six weeks ago, I suppose. But I knew I had lost it. I just put it down. And I couldn't find it. And all the cards were in and my license and everything. And it just bugged me. And then um, when the mate came around yesterday, I was cutting the glass for him. I went over to get something out of um, a little, little toolbox I've got. And lo and behold, down the back behind the toolbox, on a shelf, there was my wallet. So all of a sudden, I thought, oh, I can relax. I don't have to worry about that. The worst for me was if the coppers pull you up and you haven't got your license on you. And then they're going to find you and carry on like pork chops. I mean, I've got a picture of my license on my phone, but apparently that's not good enough. Which I find a bit strange. But anyway, that is the way it is. Um, but um, I can tell you, this is Andy, I can tell you, not been doing much in the workshop. <laughs> what a trip over then. 
Uh, oh, not tripping over things. Yeah, no, I had a big clean out. It took me a couple of days. I was a bit ruthless. Uh, and the blacksmithing shop, the smithy I've got up in the front shed, in front of the metalwork shed, I kid you not, I got a full two metres of rubbish out of there, and that wasn't even touching metal. It was just rubbish. So I filled a two metre trailer up. Um, and what else did I do? I think it was three trips to the tip with logs that I've had in the yard for over 10 years and I haven't done anything with them. And Susie's going to clean the yard up. So I thought, oh, well, I'm not, I haven't done anything for 10 years. I'm not going to do it now. So, and then, of course, as <laughs> soon as I got rid of it, someone said, oh, have you got any of that timber? Oh, anyway, that's the way it goes. Our acoustic the back sides are different species of hardwood, have different effects on sound, but I don't know if veneers would have the same effect. Actually, what they're doing with um, aeroplane ply is absolutely phenomenal now, um, Daryl. I've got three, three ply and it's 1.5 mil thick and it's as strong as, in fact, that's what those soundboards are done on. So it does, oh, actually, I'll just give this a resonance tap and we'll, we'll see. I don't know if you'll hear it. There you go. So it has got resonance, not quite as much as timber. Here's a, oh, Chilean Myrtle soundboard for a um, lyre. It's got more of a ring to it. But um, yeah, that other one's not bad. Hang on, I'll, I'll try that one. I only veneered one side. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, oh no, it's flat. Isn't it? That's interesting. And yet, where it's got veneer both sides. Oh, well, in that case, I will. I'll put veneer on the back side of that too. So there you go. Thanks, Daryl. Wouldn't have done that if you hadn't made that comment. Uh, seven. Yeah, no, what it was, they're brass strings too. They're not, um, oh, there you go. They're not nylon strings or steel strings. They're brass. And they have absolutely no give whatsoever. So I learned, boy, did I learn. I learned it was an expensive lesson too. You're going to write your own book? Well, I've written a couple of books, but not on instrument making. G'day, Louise. How are you? Uh, oh, um, no, no, it wasn't your veneer. Was it? Oh, this purple's your veneer. Louise does the most exquisite veneer dyeing. That's one of hers. So, I'll, uh, yeah, we'll cut this one out first. Then we'll glue that, if I can find a mat. Oh. So with um, veneer, you bend it. It'll bend really easily one way, not so easily the other way. The way it bends, the bendy side underneath here, that's the part that goes down. So I've actually marked this one the wrong way, but doesn't matter. We'll, we'll remember that when it comes to gluing it up. Oh, so I'm going to follow this line, I guess. Where are we? We'll go there and we'll put that one there and that one there so you can see that. And what's that look like? And I'll be cutting about here, so that's good. Um, I like to have a bit of 800 wet and dry around if I can, I hope, and that's 800. And what I do with that is I'll just quickly sharpen my knife up, just a couple of laps either, either side like that, and it just keeps an edge on your knife. And it would be nice if I had a template to cut around this, but I'll do it freehand. And we'll see how we go. 
So don't try and do too much in one go. Take your time. And it'll take as long as it takes. Nearly through. Two more cuts, I reckon. Okay, now oh, that's through now. Now I'm going to, this is pretty close to the edge, in fact I think this is actual size. I, I do prefer to cut it a bit wider, but see, I started on this, <clears throat> this is the way I'll do it. Um, I'll show you a really neat way of getting a wider stencil soon. The danger you have with this, cutting it to size, is if you get chip out or broken fibres, you can see it, but in this particular case, it's going to have um, solid edging or cock beading put into it. So it's not such an issue. And those chickens are coming to visit me now. There's nothing in here. <laughs> You're fairly right. Have a look at this. Oh, as soon as I get up, yeah, good on you. Go on, now they're walking out. Nope, nothing to see here. That's it. Over it. Oh, I'll go away. Truly. Whoops, now we're going on that one, aren't we? And we're doing that one. There we go, we're back here. And winter's here. Oh, I'm so happy. Might even get up on the roof and finish painting my roof. I've said many times you can't do marquetry, in fact I'll broaden that. You can't cut veneer if you're not in a good mood. Because you <laughs> you gotta be calm, you gotta be patient, and you just gotta do it. I saw a nice quote the other day on Facebook. Attributed to um Morgan Freeman, whether or not it's true, I don't know. It was, you're not going to get a lot done if you only work when you feel like it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it tickled my fancy. I think it was written just for me. Okay. What have we got? Um, ba -dum, ba -dum. Hey Vince! Well, I'll come back here for a bit while I'm doing this. What have we got? Brenda, good day! And Vince, good day! I'll, I'll look at the camera. Hello, Brenda. Thanks for coming in. Good day, Vince. Uh, you think you would have gone. Oh, well, I hope you're better. I hope you're better from the accident, Bearded, but I hope you don't stop buying tools. 
They're good, aren't they? I like, like buying tools. Oh, that, I'm running out of places to put them. I've, I've bought um, ice with glasswork. I don't know if you've seen the scalloping. They used to put around mirrors in the 1940s, especially round mirrors, and you get this scalloping edge. They do have a, it's got a proper name. I don't know what it is because I've forgotten. But anyway, I saw a tool that does just that. And when my mate Bill was around here yesterday, I said, oh, mate, check this out. It's for doing scallops on mirrors. He said, oh, have you used it? I said, no, but I might one day. He just looked at me and said, yeah, of course you might. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I suppose better the tool shop get it than the bookies get it, so got to be happy with that. I couldn't back a winner in a one-horse race. I really couldn't. Okay, here we go. Starting to look good now. Um, I always try and start with the sharpest corners because they're the hardest. And when you're starting out, you've got a bit of patience and you don't want to rush it. So do the hardest part first. Then your reward is the easiest part. Honestly, I forgot I had all this stuff. I had a look down in the depth of my timber shed yesterday. So I didn't know I was going to... Whoops. That's exactly why I don't like doing this. Without... Okay, that's all right. It just chipped out when I was cutting, but the size of the um, cock beating I'm putting in there will cover that, so... That's not going to be hard to bear. It's a little flaky. This is gnarly too, where I'm going here. I'll show you in a tick. I'll just... Because I'm going through a lot of... So this is buttress stuff. That's why it's high figure. Oh, let me see. What have we got? Uh, flat resonance is necessarily bad thing. Luth is often turn the top soundboard to a flat pitch so as not to ring too much on that. Well, all right, T-Bone, you talk a minute. I'll leave that one the way it is and then I can um, <laughs> I can see for myself which way it goes. Although there, there was one, you're meant to taper the soundboard um, when I'm using Douglas fir. You taper it from the middle out to thinner at the sides. I did that on one, yeah, it was all right, and then I did another one, and I didn't taper the sides, and I got a better sound out of it. So I'm starting to find, now I'm liable to flames, and that's okay, but from my experience, a lot of this uh, technical stuff they carry on about is, well, I won't say what I would say, but it, it just doesn't seem to hold true. I think it's all part of the the mystic, you can't do that because we're cleverer brigade. Um, because quite frankly, I've seen some harps recently that have been made by people that weren't luthiers and they haven't followed the strict protocols and I've got to tell you, the harps sound pretty good to me. Okay, starting to get a bit of breaking there. Well, we'll go to this one here. What does that look like? There you go. You're just starting to get cracking where I'm getting these beautiful bits of pattern because they're very, very hard. They tend to crack the timber between the ribs. That's when you've got to come off the come off the press of the 
knife and just very, very gently stroke it. Now, I've got a break here, so I'm going to try and cut this one first. See, that's broken there. So if I can relieve the stress on that piece, there's a good chance it's not going to continue through. And only do the size radius you feel comfortable with. Doing this little bit here to be so nice if I could go all the way around, but no, I'm better off just doing this little bit and then coming up a little. And now we can do this straight-ish bit. I mean, even on a straight line, the temptation there is to, oh, it's easy, I'll just do a straight line now, break it down into smaller bits, or, you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. For me personally, I like smaller bits, because then if I stuff it up, I only stuff up a small bit at a time. business end now. Oh, what have we got? Hey, this is lovely. I haven't streamed for ages and everyone comes in. I love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, always looking at the positive bearded. Why not? Good on you. That's what I say. That's that's going to be my mantra, Andy. If a job's worth doing <laughs> properly, it's worth doing slowly. And I'm going to use that on the backyard. And I'll just explain to Sue that my mentor, Andy, said that if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing slowly. So don't be surprised if you get a phone call, mate. <laughs> oh, dear. G'day, Ray, how are you? How's it over in WA? Someone told me the other day WA stands for wait a lot. Is that true? Whoops. There we go. Uh, Max! See, this tree, everyone give Max a big standing ovation. Because Max is the reason I'm streaming today, because of a comment he left on Facebook. On you, Maxwell! Get me out of my lethargy. No, it hasn't truly been lethargy. I have, have been doing a lot of stuff. But it's good to be back. And Susie's up in the house preserving Granny Smith apples at the moment. We went and got a carton of them, 18 kilos of apples. There we go. On the home stretch now. through this bit. I just noticed some comments come up. You'll have to post pictures, Max. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to go from here down to where I've been cutting.
Well, there we go. It's done. Okie dokie. Where are we? There you go. That's it. Oh, now. Got to, got to find the neck. Where did I put it? Anyone see? Oh, there we go. Here we go. It's all good. Oh, dear. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So that goes on there, just like that. And I'm just going to see if I can find a board that I can put over that so we can clamp it. Okay. Oh, and as is my want, I shall use hide glue and a hammer. And we'll hammer it down, then block it, and um, then when that's dry, I'll do the other side. This this isn't quite as serious uh, as veneering one side only because of the, as you can see, the bulk of the, the bulk of the thing, it's not going to bend and twist. But I will do another side. I'll wait until this one's dried and then I'll do the other side. Ah, dear. Uh, I tell you what, I'll give them a plug too. Absolutely. If you're in Australia, then if you're sick of the rotten meat that you're getting at the supermarket, Sue and I just got onto this mob called Our Cow. O-U-R-C-O-W. Our Cow. And lovely story. I love stories like this. They uh, bought, young couple, they bought a, a farm, a cattle farm in 2019. And um, then unfortunately we had uh, COVID and then they had bushfires go through their property and they nearly lost everything. And in uh, sort of desperation or lateral thinking, the lady of the couple, the wife, whatever, um, she suggested that they put something online and see if they can sell their meat online and then get, they can then guarantee, you know, what their cattle are going to be worth. And they kicked it off in 2019, I think, and the company has, has grown substantially since then, but it's still very much a business. And I think they've got, they've involved about 150 different family farms in it now. And it is brilliant. Yeah. Or they're based at um, Casino, but I think they've just moved their operation to Sydney, but their farm's in Casino. And they just send you this meat. And you get a shopping list. You can have this, this, and this, or you can have set packs. You can have a regular order every six weeks, every two weeks, every three weeks, whatever. And uh, you can change, you know, whatever the set packs are. And they, they're not trying to compete with supermarkets. So, yeah, it's a lot dearer than supermarket meat. But I'm telling you, the meat is just to die for. Sue and I had, what did we have? Lamb rissoles last night, and there was no fill. It was all meat. Same with the sausages, just all meat. And you tell them what date you want it delivered, it gets delivered, it's all packed with um, in a um, freezer, bubble wrap sort of thing, with ice packs, it's all cryovac'd, and absolutely, yeah. So if want decent meat and you don't mind paying a little bit extra, get onto it. Our cow. 
check it out. They've got the full story on the line of how it happened and what happened. And now, look, I salute you and I take my hats off to you because you're doing something good, you're local, and your product, tell you what, it leaves supermarket and honestly, the butchers that we've dealt with, it leaves them for dead. It is just so good. Nice to see people getting on and having a go in this weird sort of climate we're in at the moment. Okie dokie, let's go. Let's make some mess. Oh uh, dear. <laughs> Oh, I think I should change this, <laughs> this glue pot around a bit, I think. Oh. Yeah, let me just have a... Oh. Da -da -dum -dum, ba -diddly -doo. Da -da -da -dum. Oh, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> Actually happened. We got that, uh, got our first shipment of meat. And I thought, yeah, baby, we're into this. And I said to Susie, go and cook some snags up. We'll give it a try. Because if they got good sausages, that's it. Everything else is going to be good. And um, so Susie made these, cooked these sausages and made a couple of sausage sangers and had them out in the front veranda. And I said, oh, you want a cup? And she said, all right. So I just went inside, grabbed the cupper, and she went and did something. And I came back and the chooks had eaten me sausages. And the duck, or the goose, had eaten all the bread. So that was it. And see, the chooks like it. Oh, I like it too. No, I kid you not, excellent meat. All right, now I'll flick over the cameras and you can watch me do this. Now, because this is a bit gnarly, you can see it's all buckling and doing horrible things. What, um, what I'm going to do is glue the top side as well. See how that's all curling up there? Now, if I put a nice bulb of glue on there, Okay, you can see that starting to sit down now. I'll just put this away. Don't be frightened of using glue. It means start at the beginning, and I have the handle pointed outwards, and just little chevron. This is pretty bony, this stuff, because it's got the figure in it. I might just take it a little bit of slip sliding to get it to where I want to go, which is fine. But the uh, the effect you get with this, it's it's three dimensional. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Now I could really leave that after hammering it, but I like to put a, a weight on the top of it just to make sure. And I don't know if you, I've explained it before, but when you're um, hammering, what you're doing is you're making a very, very good clamp. What this is doing is taking the air from between the substrate and veneer itself. And once you've got that, you've then got the best friend in the world, which is atmospheric pressure, which is about 14 and a half pound per square inch. So it's a lot of pressure. Is then going to act on the veneer and hold it in place. As I said, I'm, this stuff's pretty cranky. I'm getting a little bit of a curl here and here. So I'm going to put a piece of plywood on the top and we'll just 
clamp it down. It doesn't have to be for too long. This hide glue works on two ways. It works on heat. When the heat goes out, the glue starts to gel and go off. And then it works on moisture. As the moisture leaves the glue, you create that bond. Uh, there you go. All right. For high glue over the majority of um, other glues, particularly the veneering, is if I get it wrong, all I've got to put heat gun on it, and I can lift it. Admittedly, you can do that with some PVAs, but it's not always a guarantee. And I prefer hot high glue to the, the cold stuff. I have and I've been given some to, to play with. Um, and to be honest, for me anyway, it nowhere near as nice to use as hot high glue. Now where did another piece go? There we go. Oh! This is not really a mad scramble to get it all done. Pretty special when it's finished, I think. I think that should hold that quite nicely. I'll put one more on for luck. If I was in a big, huge hurry, I'd um, take that off. What's going on here? Wait a minute. Don't know what's going on. I don't know, I'm not getting live chat now. What's going on? Live chat. Live chat has moved. Oh, there we go. I got, I got you back again. All right. So now what I want to do is make up some small squares that I can then inlay into that where I sanded through. So I'll just quickly have a look and have a think and see how small the squares are on, I suppose. Mm. I still enjoy coffee. Ah, oh dear. All right. Wait a minute. Sharpen me pretzel up. I saw one on Instagram. There was this kid with a pencil sharpener like that. And he thought it was a fishing reel. How sad. All right. Now. I think that. That would look all right. So let's measure that. Six and a 
So there, four mil, five mil strips. How thick is this ply? What I've got here. That's five mil. Let me just. Of course, the, th the thicker the strips, the easier it is to do. Too thick. Too thick. Let me see what I've got down here. I'm just looking for. Oh, oh no, it's too thin. It's never happy, eh? Hey? It's either too thick or too thin. Oh, what's that? That looks. That could be right. Same that one there. Ah. No, we'll stick with this one then. What's that? Okay. Well, I'll just cut a couple of bits off of this. Ready to go. Simple little board you can make up quite easily for cutting uniformed strips. All it is, a bit of board like that. Got a brass strip at the end here. Mat, put the mat on. Put those there in the bases. Move that up to there. And away we go. Um, get up there. There you go. Let's get a straight edge first. Again, let the weight of the knife. Actually, I quite. No, we might go. We might go smaller. It's going to look nice smaller, I think. Wait a minute. I'll just cut, cut a couple more pieces. We'll go, we'll go three mils, so thinner, 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 thinner. Uh, 
Okay. We'll, we'll see how this looks. Oh yeah, that's much nicer. So we'll cut a few of those. I don't know how many we need. Um, let's have a look. Ooh. So we get say that's two. That's 50, that should be three mil. So it'd be 10, we do 10 of each color, which is really five. If we do five strips of each color, no, six of one strip, five of another, that should get us what we're looking for. You gotta do an extra one, because it's just the way it works out. This is number two. Three. Oh, it's nice to be doing this again. Streaming, I mean. Oh, it's nice to be doing veneer work too. Isn't it? One more of those. Cut those in half, that'll give me 10 of those. And we'll do 11 of these. which I forgot to do on the other one, but I should be able to figure that out. First of all, do a straight cut. It'll look as if it's a straight edge, and look, it might well be a straight edge. But you might as well absolutely make sure it's a straight edge by giving it a straight edge. Tell you what, that's a, that is hard to see. Oh, 
one. The reason I can't see it is it's um, purple and it's dark. The ruler and the fence, and the purple's dark, so I can't see it. But doing it this way, I can. I better off doing it that way because then I can at least get my knife in. I don't know what this is, Louise. It's lovely to cut. Better than that green rubbish. Okay, that's four. This also is penance for sanding through. Because I was slack, I should have been sanding by hand, but I didn't. I used the sander and I had a pretty aggressive grit on it. And I think I just got carried away a little bit. Whereas if I was hand sanding, I reckon there's a good chance I wouldn't have gone through. Okay, so one more of these. And we'll do a glue up. Then when you're gluing this stuff, just treat it as if it's just ordinary timber. Because that's all it is. It's just a bit thinner than what you might be. There we go, last one. There you go, all done. Okay, so now if I just lay these out, I just want to get a measurement to start with. Yeah, I'm a bit cross with myself. I didn't put the pencil mark on that. I can see on the purple one that it's right. Okay. Now, if I measure across there. Okay, it's going to give me more than enough for what I need. So I'll just put this stuff away. Now, if I've got any contact paper, it would be really, really good. <laughs> there we go. I knew, I knew, I knew it. I knew I had some there somewhere. The trick I learned, I think it was John Metcalf's book, Marketry. Um, okay. A little bit of double sided tape. And the work board. It looks pretty good to me.
needed that one for. There it is. Oops. Okay, so it's just ordinary contact. This is double sided tape. This is my own variation. It does make it a heck of a lot easier to do. Okay, take that off there. And that off, so I've got double sided tape on the shiny side of that. Put that down on the work table. Pull it reasonably tight. All right, so it's not going to slip off. And then peel the backing off of that. Now that's nice and sticky. So I can then, I'm just going to have to live with this, I think. Put the first one down there. And then, oh, I'm using, um, oh, I could use high glue, but in this case, I'm going to use Tide Bond Original because it goes off pretty quick. that one. It's even better. And put some on a piece of timber. And then just drag that edge through it. See if I can get the right side down. Which one's got pencil on it? That's got pencil, so this one goes down. And just snug that one up to that. You can have it so it overlaps a little bit, and then when you push down, it uh, clicks to so you get a really nice tight join like that. Then get a green one. I don't know, I'm just going to have to take a punt on this. Drag it through the edge so you get a nice long line. And repeat the process. Bring it over the purple one, and then when you're pushing it, you're actually pushing it up nice and close. And then we do a purple one. Yuck! Okay, see the pencil line on that, so. That means it goes down there like that. Bring it in nice and close. Let me just see if I can get you a different shot on that. There we go. So what do we want, another green? Whoops. 
Doesn't matter if you get too much on the on the top, that, that's all going to come off eventually. I've just realised I should have started with purple, but that's all right. We'll do that at the end. And that's how we're looking now. Another purple. When this finished, people will go, oh, how did you do that? And you tell them you cut little squares and joined them together. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put one of these at the beginning. That way we'll end up should end up with a purple. Hang on, let me let me just have a look. Yeah, okay. I'll put this one here. There you go. So if you can start and finish with a colour, doesn't matter which colour. When you offset them, you're going to have to take one colour off every second row, like a chessboard. If you're going to ever make a chessboard using veneer like this, exactly the same process. Because if you don't, what you have to do then is actually glue another colour on the end of each second one. And believe me, it is a downside easier to cut one off, especially when they're little, than it is to try and glue one on. That's all right, we'll do a purple now. Where's the glue? Need a bit more glue. Oh, my God, most likely. Absolutely messed up the chatoyance on this, but it doesn't matter because it's a repair and it's a practice one anyway. All right, so that's what we've got. The next job, once this is dry, is I'll cut that and then take one of these purples off and then move it alongside so I've doubled that width and I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know I might keep it as squares or I, I might do diamonds on it I don't know but that's a job for later on just put a heavy weight on that Another job done. He's plowing through them today. Good to see. Good to see. <laughs> oh, what have I done? I've messed it up again. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, where are we up to? Ah. Uh, Really? 
Tommy Ray. I know it's a while ago. What was that? 20 minutes ago? I'd be, yeah, well, no. When you think about it, the cows are vegans. They just eat grass. So who knows? What do I got? I got an ad. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, love homemade apple sauce. Apple pie. Oh, she's got to make apple pies for the fruit oh too. There you go. Uh, no, it's not local for you, is it, Andy? I know that was 20 minutes ago too. Uh, good night, Andy. If you're still there and you haven't gone to bed, good night, mate. Catch you tomorrow. Mate, actually, I'll most likely catch you tomorrow. Oh, it's birch. Very, very nice. Well, you want some eat pine? Give us a buzz, girl. I've got a heaps of it here. Not a drama. Let me know. I think I've got big, wide sheets. Didn't I give you some? Oh, I don't care if you've used it. That's terrific. Um, yeah, look, I don't use it for anything, so come on down and come and get some. Well, I think that's just about it. Um, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. And we've been going for at least an hour, I'm sure. What are we doing? An hour and 17. So, well, that's, that's not bad. Break me in gently. Oh. And it's quarter past 11. About time for another coffee. Uh, so tomorrow, what I'll do, what's tomorrow? Wednesday. I'd be a little bit later in the day because I've got stuff to do in the morning. Excuse me. But we'll um, glue up the other side of that cheek or the, the neck to that 34 stringer. Um, and we'll continue with the Parker tree. And I might even be fitting and marking out the string bars or the string, what else it's got, it's, I'm sure it's got a proper name. The string band for um, inlaying onto the soundboard. And if there's anything, as always, if there's anything you want to know, just ask me in the chat. And if it's within my power or my sphere of expertise, I'm more than happy to stop what I'm doing and show you how to do it. Um, no, but apart from that, I've got machining to do and you can't really see much there and it's a bit boring anyway. Um, I'll have some glue-ups to do tomorrow and maybe some route. I don't know. So that's it. What have we here? Hey, Roy, how are you, mate? I'm just about to knock off. But thanks for dropping in. I hope you're feeling well. I miss your comments. Nice to have you there. And Brenda, she, uh, she should make up some apple... Apple butter. Never heard of it. What's that? What apple butter? I'll have to go and Google it. Sounds good. So that's it. Um, and I'm down how slack's that. Anyway, this is Steve pulling the shed door, door down and say thanks very much for your attendance, your input, your support, your encouragement, and your comment. Uh, if you like what you, you see, please hit the subscribe button. We're not. 100k. I really want to get there. That's one of those things. Um, and I'll get back to a bit more regular streaming as I've had a hiatus of about nearly a month, I think. But things are getting back on track and I'm going to see if I can start streaming from the machine shed as well. Uh, so you might do some metal work up there. We'll see how we go. But in the meantime, what well, I'll pull the shed door down. So what is it? Yeah, look after yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. There you go. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop again very, very soon. Then look after yourself. God bless. Oh, stay creative. Stay busy. It's good for your mental health. Catch you later. Bye for now.